It's about creating tasty meat without using animals. That's the point. Good meat, no animals. So for sure it's a fashion, it's a big trend. Uh, luckily we are here before the trend. I believe so deeply that this is one of the most important things we can do for this planet, for its future, uh, for the health of people, that the fact that some people doubt it is clear because it's so big, it's so scary, it's so complicated and not everybody needs to be connected to it. I know deeply how I'm connected to it and the hundred people that work here and our investors and partners, but it's very, very easy to believe it's true and it's important and it's not easy and, and there will be some people that feel they are, are not connected as we are connected. If you look at uh, any market that there is an industry of 1.5 trillion dollar that has been around for at least 100 years, uh, there would be some forces working against the new forces, uh, especially in an industry that has so much invested in capital equipment, in lobbying, in regulation all over the world. And a lot of people, hundreds of thousands of people that rely on this for their livelihood. It doesn't mean that the new industry is necessarily destroying the people in that industry, the culture of that industry. Uh, there will be some big companies that are very rich and very powerful that will uh, have a little bit of a problem in their business, but the people that are involved in this industry not necessarily love it, even though it provides them their livelihood. I'll be happy if people working in slaughterhouses go to work operating 3D printers. That can be amazing for them and their families as well. I think what's fueling us the most, besides the product, which is good, is the fact that even meat lovers, even butchers that have been in this business for five generations, when they taste our meat, they say this is the future. So that's the fuel that we can get. The investors, the articles, they're not as important as somebody in a restaurant in Jaffa eating our meat and saying, I never believed that in my lifetime, alternative meat will be so good. That's, that's the strongest fuel. And because it's food, it's so emotional, you cannot fake it. The first time somebody tastes our meat, the reaction is something that I love to see. I get goosebumps every time that I see it. First, we call it new meat, new meat. simpler. Uh, we believe, and this is a part of the company and also the technology, that there's nothing wrong with meat. Meat is amazing. People like meat. You eat meat, right, Martin? Mm -hmm. uh, so people enjoy meat. And meat is a very, very good food product. It has protein, it's uh, healthy, it's easy to cook, it's affordable, and it's really, really tasty. The problem is the cow. The yeah. cow is very inefficient, very lazy, needs a lot of food, uh, gives a lot of pollution. But we are trying to understand what in the cow makes meat so exciting. Because we want to replace the cow while maintaining meat that will be the same. And this sounds very basic, sounds almost like romantic idea. But when you look really on what the cow does, what is the function of the cow in making meat, you look differently on the technology of how you create meat. And instead of looking at the product, let's make a better hamburger, let's make a better chicken nugget, we said, what does the cow do? How can we compete with the cow using technology? And this question, that was the question from day one of the company, led us to a very unique approach to the product, the way we cook it, the technology, the ingredients, the, the patents, the people that work in the company. And, and it's not an accident, but the result is so different from all the others in this space that we call ourselves we are a whole different animal. By the way, we don't see people doing other alternative meat as a competitor. Our competition is people that are doing meat yeah. because they have a good product that is affordable that people buy. Alternative meat has interesting ideas. So we are another interesting idea that want to go deeper and deeper into competition with the meat companies. And also, probably necessarily, we didn't define the same target audience as the products that you ate, because those products, some of them targeting vegans. And vegans do not necessarily expect to be exactly like meat. We are now targeting, in our launch phase, mostly chefs. And when you work with chefs, they anticipate something that is much more meaty, much more uh, has the behavior in cooking, flavor, taste, texture, smell, all of that like meat. And we define the product for them. Some vegans, they taste our meat and they do not like it because they say it's too meaty. So, so also looking at who is the customer and what is the product specification for that customer 
uh, makes a lot of difference. Hopefully you will like our meat better than you like the alternatives, but still, you consume most of the time meat from animals, right? Not alternative meat. Yeah. So with you, the competition is to convince you to eat our meat instead of meat from animals, not instead of the other plant-based meat options in the supermarket. Today our meat is more expensive than, than traditional meat and if we had the infrastructure, the, the economies of scale and the support from government, our meat would be today dramatically cheaper than animal meat because our ingredients are more cheap and we don't have a lot of waste. In meat they have a lot of waste. So of course we are expecting also this, this another wave, the trendiness and the excitement of consumers to be followed by regulation, by subsidies of an industry that is sustainable, that is technological, that uh, opens up a lot of things that are related to health and equality, and then it will be another boost. But still, plant-based meat can become, in a much smaller scale, more affordable than meat. We don't need the scale that they have, because it's very difficult to raise a cow for two years and make money without the subsidies and without the economies of scale. You know my background, you know that I work for HP Indigo and, and for Hycon, and what I learned from them is that the importance of being fast to market is not because we need market share and we need to be the first. It's not that because I think that the competition will be very long term, 20, 30, 40 years, until we really replace the meat industry. So why do we want to be fast or why do we need? Because we learn much more by being in the market than being in the lab. We learn much more from an interaction with a chef in Amsterdam and a pop-up restaurant in Jaffa than one year of talking with ourselves. So we want to be fast because we want our meat to be global and meat is different in every place around the world. So we really need to reach the consumers in the USA and in Hong Kong fastest as possible to know what to develop for them to accelerate the development. This is why we are a little bit driving ourselves crazy by how fast we run even though the competition is not so intense. So it's, this is the reason, to, to make an impact on the real world fast. And the second thing, if you look at our plan for the next five years, it's a very ambitious plan, very aggressive. It's still a tiny part of the meat industry. And the real mission of the company is to make new meat that replaces meat from animals, because this is what the world needs today. And if we wait 10, 15 years, the impact that we will generate is not fast enough for the planet, for my kids, for your kids. Okay, we have one business, our business is meat. How you make the meat is broken down to the different strategies of replacing the cow. We use 3D printing because you need to create a very complicated product. The product that is meat in an animal, you can have the cow as a printer. The cow takes ingredient and they build it layer by layer, voxel by voxel. And we wanted to recreate that, to have this complexity of the fibers, of the fat, of ju the juiciness inside. So we built a printer or a robot, you can call it this way, that looks at the product as a very sophisticated array of voxels and decides here we'll have muscle, here we'll have blood, here we'll have fat. But you cannot disconnect, it's not a printer of the ingredients. The printer is very unique, the ingredients are very unique and the combination is fundamentally unique. So it's a one single solution of we provide our customers, which are now food distributors and in the future retailers, a solution that allows them to make meat and to have the meat that they want. It's based on consumables, it's based on a machine, much similar to the Gillette model or the Indigo model that we all know, but because it's food and because the scale is much bigger and because the complexity is much bigger, it's not really identical to, to what we know from other industries. We're inventing a new supply chain model and business model, but that's easy because we're reinventing a stake which is much more complicated and, and the other innovation that we need to have are, are quite natural. I give my kids our meat and I give my grandfather who's 90, so they're certainly safe. If you compare them to meat from animals, it's more healthy to eat alternative meat, and especially the redefined meat, new meat, than a meat from an animal. If you're today a vegan that eats raw food and you switch to our meat, it's slightly more fatty, it's slightly more processed, it has a little bit more salt. But definitely there's a lot of results from studies around the world that especially for men, uh, but also for the general population, switching from meat to what we call plant-based meat. It's better for health, longevity, uh, reduces the risk of some kinds of cancers. There is no cholesterol at all, much lower saturated fat. Uh, so we are not recommending for people to stop eating food and just eat our food, but if people will switch to our meat, 
It's also promoting the health. Keep in mind that when you eat today a steak or a hamburger, you don't eat it because it's healthy, you eat it because it's tasty. So we are still optimizing for taste the most and knowing it's safe and healthy as well. The cow is indeed the most damaging, the most pollutive kind of animal. But if you look at pork, it's also not the best solution for the environment. You look at chicken, it's not the best solution for the environment. Also keep in mind, I, I grew up in a dairy farm. My, fam my uh, mother was a dairy farmer. And the suffering of animals is something that we also need to remember. Our ability to create good beef means that we will be able to do good pork in the future. But because the problem is so big and the industry is so big, we, we are focusing now on beef, but from a technology perspective, they are very similar. They are mammals, the structure of the muscle is very similar, the, the flavors are quite similar, and, and we can do it as well. We, we have proof of concept of a lot of types of animal, but we're focusing on beef now. Yeah, long term, we, we expect our partners to take a lot of the load and to help us with distribution, maybe manufacturing, especially marketing in different countries around the world. Because we are a young company and a small company, and, and the understanding of what we're doing is more important than the business or the growth, we do a lot by ourselves. We still go to chefs and talk with them one by one. We still, I still cook our meat to some of the chefs. When we go to a retailer, we go, not a distributor. It doesn't mean that long term we will do it, but, but you need to understand that for us, we are a company that has been founded three and a half years ago, we have a product, we're in the beginning. We are still curious, we still want to learn, we still don't know answers to everything, and we can only learn them by listening and by engaging directly with the people that are in this industry. People that sell meat today, people that cook meat, and people that eat meat. And we don't want to lose it. Today somebody asked me, so why do you need to cook in a pop-up restaurant that you do? And you're what's the most important thing? That the meat will be tasty. And you do it by cooking it, by eating it, by talking to the people. And five years from now, maybe we will have partners doing distribution in Latin America, but we will still go to a chef in Brazil and ask him what he thinks about the meat and how we can make it better. I'm Eshkhar, I'm 37, I have three kids. I live in Nataf, outside of Jerusalem. Uh, I like to cook, I like to drink wine. And I love eating meat, but I feel bad for animals so that I don't meet eat that comes from animals. And now I have uh, this job that allows me to eat meat, to work with chefs, to cook, to work on technology, to meet amazing people, and to basically do what I think is right for the future of this planet. What surprises me completely, first time ever tasting redefined meat, and you have something here that looks like minced meat, it has a texture of minced meat, and this is just so well prepared, it tastes so great. I am uh, I'm convinced. So uh, thank you to Redefine Meat, and thank you to Alain Bachelini and, and uh, the entire team at Redefine Meat for giving this experience to us. Thank you.